Okay, the complicated. Judicial Department. Eto, maraming na-excite po dito tuwing napapakita ko po ito. Magkakaroon po tayo ng apat na federal courts that will all exercise judicial power. And uh, I understand si Justice Vivi Mendoza recently had a presentation also about this. This is a diminution of the court's exercise of judicial power because of what they did in this proposed federal constitution. Magkakaroon po one, federal supreme court. The composition will be one chief justice and eight associate justices. The three justices, including the chief justice, shall be appointed by the president, the three appointed by the commission on appointments, and the three appointed by the federal constitutional court and bank. That's one of the federal courts. So, pinaghati-hati na po yung appointments. Tatlo mula sa presidente, tatlo mula sa commission on appointments, which is the legislature, and tatlo mula sa judiciary through the Federal Constitutional Court and Bank. Ang jurisdiction po niya, ang jurisdiction po ng Federal Supreme Court ay to appoint three associate justices of the Federal Constitutional Court, Federal Administrative Court, and Federal Electoral Court. Itong Federal Supreme Court po na to ang mag appoint ng mga tatlong justices doon sa Constitutional Court, Administrative Court, and Electoral Court. It will also appoint all justices and judges of lower courts and all conflicts and it will resolve all conflicts within government, decisions of lower courts, tax legality, lower court jurisdiction, criminal offenses. So, makikita niyo po dito, mawawala na po sa presidente yung kapangyarihan na mag-appoint ng mga justi justices and judges of the courts. Mapupunta na po dito ngayon sa Federal Supreme Court. Next. Okay, on the Federal Constitutional Court, composition, same. Chief Justice, eight Associate Justices, three including the CJ, appointed by the President, three appointed by the CA, three appointed by the Federal Supreme Court. So, makikita niyo po, nagbaliktaran. Sa Federal Supreme Court po, yung tatlo, ma-appoint ang Federal Constitutional Court. Ngayon naman po, dito sa Federal Constitutional Court, yung tatlo niya, ma-appoint po ng Federal Supreme Court. Ang jurisdiction po niya, appoints the associate justices of the Federal Supreme Court. They will hear and decide writ of habeas corpus, writ of amparo, writ of habeas data, and writ of kalikasan. And they will also hear and decide impeachment cases. Ang Federal Constitutional Court na po ang magiging bagong impeachment court under this arrangement. And they will hear and also decide any dispute or matter involving questions of constitutionality. Okay, there will also be a federal administrative court. Same. Chief Justice plus eight associate justices. Ito po, mukhang nagkulang po sila sa math. Because the wording is, they will appoint the Chief Justice plus three associate justices to be appointed by the President. And then the three appointed by the CA and the three appointed by the Federal Supreme Court and back. Next, please. Note, the Chief Justice and three associate justices shall be appointed by the President. So, the President appoints four? So, mobra. Nagkulang po sila sa math. Next. Ang jurisdiction po nila ay to review decisions of the Federal Constitutional Commissions and the Administrative and Quasi-Judicial Bodies. Yan po ang magiging jurisdiction naman ng Federal Administrative Court. Okay, magkakaroon na po tayo ngayon ng Federal Electoral Court. Composition, Chief Justice, plus 14 Associate Justices. 4 including the CJ, appointed by the President. 5 appointed by the Commission on Appointments. And 5 appointed by the Federal Constitutional Court and Bank. Next. Ang jurisdiction po niya ay to hear and decide all contests relating to the elections, returns, and qualifications of the President, the Vice President, and bang po sa kanila, and members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. So, in effect, mawawala na po yung ating Senate Electoral Tribunal at yung House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal. Because the sole judge of all election contests now will be the Federal Electoral Court. 
Sa judicial department naman po. Okay. Uh, this is important to highlight and I, I understand it was also highlighted by Justice Mendoza. The Federal Constitutional Court and the Federal Administrative Court may be called upon to render advisory opinions. Ang takot po dito ni Justice Mendoza ay mababahain itong, court, itong courts ito for request for advisory opinions. And it will hamper all decision making. Okay, again, going back po, the Federal Constitutional Court will now sit as the impeachment court. What happens po to the Senate and the House of Representatives? They will now form a joint impeachment committee. So all impeachment cases will originate in the House and the Senate through the joint impeachment committee. And if they find merit, they elevate it now to the Federal Constitutional Court who will now sit as the impeachment court. The members of the four federal courts will have term limits. They shall serve for a term of 12 years or until they reach the age of 70, whichever comes first or becomes incapac incapacitated to discharge the duties of their office. So, binigyan na po nila ng term limit ang ating mga maestrado. Next. Other critical points. Okay. Wala na po yung annual salary dito sa proposed federal constitution na to. Kung mapapansin niyo po sa 1987 constitution, it prescribes kung magkano po yung sahod at compensation ng ating presidente, vice presidente, speaker, senate president, and chief justice. Ngayon po, dito sa proposed federal constitution, there's no mention of the annual salary anymore. Also, no more prohibition on foreign military bases, troops, or facilities. Kaya po kanina, napag-usapan po ni Soljen Florin, anong, kung yung 1987 constitution po is anti-dictatorship. Ako po masasabi ko po, itong federalism is anti-Filipino. It's actually pro-China because no more prohibition of foreign military bases. This effectively allows Chinese military presence in our waters, in our lands, in our territory. Dahil wala na po yung express prohibition on foreign military bases. Wala na rin po yung pursuit or recovery of ill-gotten wealth of the Marcoses. Kung maalala niyo po sa 1987 Constitution, kasama po yun eh. Hahabulin ang mga nagnakaw. Ngayon po, there's no mention in the proposed federal constitution. And alam na po natin kung sino po ang magiging beneficiaryo kapag natuloy po ito. Okay. There will also be no more ban on private armies, armed groups, and paramilitary for, uh, forces. Ito rin po, nasa 1987 constitution din po ito. Ngayon, wala na. So in theory, private armies, magiging laganap na naman dito sa ating bansa. Next. Okay, local governments, save for the federated regions, will no longer have a just share in the national taxes. Pansin niyo po, may nabanggit po ba about local government units? May nabanggit po ba about barangays? May nabanggit po ba about cities? Municipalities? Ang paulit-ulit lang pong sinasabi, federated regions. What happens to our local government units? Unlike po in the 1987 constitution, they are expressly recognized. Now, they're gone. What will happen to them? Yan po ang dapat po natin ipaabot sa ating mga LGUs. Mawawala kayo sa equation. Bagus, madadagdagan pa. If you think about it, yung federated regions po, nadagdagan po ng panibagong layer. Assume po natin na magkakaroon pa rin po ng LGUs. Madadagdagan po ng another layer between the federal government and the LGUs. And again, there's just the mere call for secession by a federated region may trigger the step in powers or declare martial law or state of rebellion or lawlessness of the president. All existing laws creating government offices or agencies not consistent with the proposed federal constitution are invalidated and repealed. Nasa transitory provision po to. So lahat po ng batas natin ngayon na kontra sa proposed federal constitution na ito ay invalidated. 
Kasama na po dyan ang local government ko, yung mga example lang po yan, yung tourism act. So, oh, again, there is overall lack of transparency in the framing process of the proposed federal constitution. Ang kagandahan po ng ating 1987 constitution, may debate. Maliban po dun sa mga highly esteemed individuals po, personalities, leaders na, na naging part ng 1987 constitution, their debates were recorded. That's why it's very easy for us to divine kung ano po yung intent nila when they were discussing provisions. Now, in this proposed federal constitution, wala. Have we seen any records? Have we seen any journals of the debates? We can only guess kung ano po yung mga naging intent nila by including these provisions. And again, it's the overall lack of transparency. Okay, on LGUs and fiscal powers. What the proposed federal constitution does not say or provide versus the 1987 constitution. One, again, as mentioned, there was no mention of provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays as territorial and political subdivisions. Only mentions local government units without definition. Okay? Next. No express mandate for Congress to enact a, lo a local government code. Next, no express power for LGUs to create old sources of revenues and levy taxes. Only for the federated regions. Take note po, earlier, nakita po natin, federated regions lamang ang may kapangyarihan na magbuis. Paano po yung mga LGUs natin? na nangongolekta po ng mga fees din po para po sa kanilang operationalization. Mawawala na, hindi kasama. Next, no mention of just share in the national taxes and its automatic release for LGUs. Only for the federated regions. Take note, yung kanina pong nabanggit natin na 50% share of collected taxes, federated regions po makakatanggap. May matatanggap po ba ang LGUs? Walang sinabi. Walang sinabi ngayon kung may matatanggap na just share ang ating mga local government units. There is also no mention of equitable share in the proceeds of the utilization and development of national wealth only for the federated regions. Next, there's also no mention of term limit for elective local officials only for federal regional government officials. So in theory, a local official can rule indefinitely under federalism. And we all know how it's going to work. Na, 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 nabanggit po kanina about political dynasty. Oo, may political dynasty provision nga. Pero, in effect, they can rule without limits because of this. And by the way, just a note, di, di ko lang po naisama dito. On the anti-political dynasty po, no? May nakapuna ho, it was brought to my attention, ang pinagbabawal po doon sa political dynasty doon ay one national and local simultaneously. Pero ang hindi po pinagbawal, local-local. So you can actually have a situation now na governor, yung tatay, mayor, yung anak, another mayor ng municipality o city, another anak, pabangkin, asawa, and so on and so forth. Kasi ang pinagbawal lang po sa political dynasty provision doon ay yung national and, and local. Wala po doon sa local-local na pinagbawal. Next, no provision on how to create, divide, merge, abolish provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays. Next, there's no mention of retention of basic autonomy for component cities and municipalities. Next, no mention on voting distinction, independence for highly urbanized and independent cities versus provinces. Uh, as you know, may mga distinction po tayo dun sa mga component cities po natin, no? Tapos yung mga uh, highly urbanized. The, ma, alibawa po, sa Naga, yung Naga City po is independently, uh, is a highly independent urbanized city. Hindi po siya buong poto sa sa governor. May distinction pong ganun ngayon. Because of this, wala ho. There's no distinction anymore. It's all blurred. 
Thus, there is no constitutional authority or guarantee on any of the foregoing under the proposed federal constitution. Dahil nga po hindi sila nabanggit, nawala na po yung mga constitutional guarantees na to para sa ating mga local government units. Next. Okay, let's discuss briefly lang ho. Very short. Mandanas versus Ochoa. Under Section 6, Article 10 of the 1987 Constitution, the local government units shall have a just share as determined by law in the national taxes which shall be automatically released to them. Next. The just share of LGUs has been defined as not being limited to internal revenue taxes. Ito po ang napakahalaga para sa ating LGUs. The Supreme Court has already declared and determined na yung just share nila ay hindi limited sa internal revenue taxes but on the national taxes mismo. And that includes, next, national taxes now included in the base for computing just share of LGUs shall be but not limited to the following. One, NIRC taxes including VAT, excise tax, documentary stamp tax collected by both the BIR and the Bureau of Customs. Two, tariff and customs duties. Three, 50% of the VAT collection in ARM. Four, 30% of the national tax collection in ARM. Five, 60% of the national taxes collected from the exploitation and development of the national wealth. Six, 85% of the excise taxes from the locally manufactured Virginia and other tobacco products. Seven, 50% of the national taxes collected under Section 106. Nireview ko pa yung tax code ko dito dahil dito. <laughs> so ito po yung mga VAT on goods, properties, VAT on services, lease, and VAT on exempt persons. 50% of that will go now to the national taxes. And lastly, 5% of the 25% Franchise taxes in favor of the national government. So, yan na po ang dinetermine na share ng ating LGUs. Because of the proposed federal constitution, swept away. Yung utang po na 1.5 trillion, these are supposedly much needed revenues by our LGUs para makapag-render ng basic services for our people. Pero, Pag natuloy po itong proposed federal constitution na to, wala na. Next. Okay. Maliban po doon sa determination of the national taxes, automatic release to the LGUs. Automatic release was also declared in the Mandanas ruling. Now, hindi na po malinaw yun ngayon. So, prospect... And, Of course, the, because of the doctrine of operative fact, Mandana's ruling will be prospectively applied. Kasi imposible naman daw magkautang yung gobyerno ng mga past. So that's why naging 1.5 trillion prospectively. Accordingly, the Supreme Court modified the pertinent provisions of the local government code by deleting the phrase internal revenue in determining LGU share. And it ordered the DOF, DBM, BIR, BOC, and the National Treasurer to include collection of all national taxes in the base of the just share for LGUs. Except, of course, the special purpose funds and special allotments. Thus, under the proposed federal constitution, the gains of LGUs in Mandanas will become moot and academic and effectively negated and disregarded. Saya. Saya. Next. Okay. On taxation, I recognize na I'm not an authority on taxation. So, with your permission, I will quote heavily Mr. Benjamin Punong Bayan. Henceforth, he is the founder of Punong Bayan and Araulio, the accounting firm. And he came up with an article, yan po yung link, uh, about the impact of taxation on the in federalism. So, he said that it's actually not federalism at all because there's no high level of autonomy. I quote, The key element in region or state autonomy under true federalism is the power to levy taxes. The direct collection of taxes to create the dynamism within the region to propel its economic growth. 
This principle and intent has been much expressed earlier by federalism proponents. There were then repeated statements that the regions will directly collect much of the taxes and give a share of the total region tax collections to the central government to cover its needs. But this did not happen. Next. The imposition of existing national taxation in almost all of its entirety has not, brought, has not been brought down to the regional level. Very little has been added to the sources of direct region taxation. And uh, these additional local taxes, yung mga nabanggit po natin kanina, the DST, the amusement, the gaming, they only favor the rich regions. Kasi yung mga rich regions po, yan yung mga marami pong pwede kolektahan eh. How about the poor regions? Alam naman po natin na there's no equality in our regions right now. If I recall correctly, I, I read and studied somewhere, tatlo lang po ang malalaking region natin. Region NCR, of course. Region 3 and uh, 4. The rest are not on the same level. Uh, th since double taxation is not allowed, so the regions cannot impose taxes similar to national taxes. So for example, the regions cannot impose income tax or any form of sales tax. The region's main source of revenue will continue to come from an allocation of total national tax collections. Ito po, a while ago I mentioned, this allocation was increased from the present 40% era to 50%, which is not much. Makita po natin, yung 10% po itinagdag, not much. How? Ah, later. Equalization fund of 3%, it's quite small for the, small re for the poor regions. Okay, illustration, para po mas mapakita. Bas base po to doon sa datos ng 2017. The BIR collected 1.7 trillion. Uh, billion po nakalagay pero iba po sila mag mag ano eh, mag, mag recognize po ng figure sa budget. Parang it's 1,000 ganyan pero in billions of pesos. Pero it's actually 1.7 trillion. And it's 450 ah sorry. It, the BIR collected 1.7 trillion. Customs collected 457 trillion or rounded off to a total of 2.2 trillion. Sorry, not for, for only 457 billion. Sabi ko nga po sa inyo, mahina ko sa math, pasensya na po. Ah. So, 1.7 trillion, 457 billion, rounded off total 2.2 trillion. Okay, from the total, you deduct the 3% equalization fund and the 5% annual black grant to the Bank Samoro. If you recall, napasa, napasa na po yung Bansa Moro Organic Law, may automatic 5% po doon para sa ating mga kapatid sa Bansa Moro. So, ang matitira na lamang po, after you deduct the 3% and the 5%, 92%. <laughs> now, a proposed federal constitution, 50% of that. So, it's 50% or one half of 92%. Ang paghahati-hatian po ng 17 regions, one point. 0.12 trillion goes to 17 regions. The current division formula for ERA is on weighted system based on the population, geographical area, and a portion divided equally. On average, each of the 17 regions gets 60 billion. And the Bank Samora will get 110 billion. The calculation of the Bank Samoro share has been simplified but the result will not differ much from the law calculation according to Mr. Punong Bayan. Clearly, the share of each of the 17 regions is rather small, particularly for the poor regions that tend to have smaller population and smaller geographical area. Next. In essence, the regions are being given a straitjacket. It's no longer attending to their own needs. One size fits all. Small ka? O oh, sige, extra large. Extra large ka? O, oh, okay, ito small. Next, a region cannot increase its sources of direct region taxation. It will mainly depend on its share of the national tax collections. A region's economic growth will depend mostly entirely on the growth of the entire economy. Its relative position among the other regions will remain practically the same or may even worsen in the case of poor regions because 
the rich the rich regions have a better economic engine. Kawawa po yung mga maliliit na region natin. Hindi po nila tumapapakinabangan. There are only three rich regions in the country and therefore 15 regions would want to have a share of the equalization fund which is equivalent to only 66 billion. Yung 3% equalization fund na po na yun, ipabasa po natin doon sa 2017, is just 66 billion based on the, 19, on the 2017 national tax collections. The amount is equivalent on the average to only 4.4 billion for each of the 15 regions. Assume po na i-distribute po natin yung equalization fund to the poor regions. That's only 4.4 billion. Malit po. Next. Clearly, the earlier intent of making the regions dynamic to pursue higher economic growth on its own cannot be realized. A region is constrained by its inability to raise incremental money through additional sources of direct taxation. It can only roll in the same tempo or even slower as the entire national economy rolls. So federalism? What federalism? Yung federated regions po natin, aasa pa rin. Depende pa rin sa takbo ng national economy para makakuha po sila ng kanilang nararapat na share sa taxation. Ang idea po ng federalismo ay supposedly magiging independent ka Autonomy. Pero hindi. Mapabawasan pa. Matatanggal pa yung beneficyo na makukuha ngayon sa mandanas. Next. Looking at it another way, the increase in the spending money of the regions is practically only 10% of the total national tax collections. Okay, so 10% lang ako. And we are making huge changes in the government structure. Not to mention the additional cost that those changes entail just to take care of the small increase. According to Mr. Punong Bayan, it does not make sense. Ito po, I quote si Mr. Punong Bayan on this one. So it doesn't make sense na gagastos po tayo ng pagkalaki-laki para i-shift yung federalismo, para mag-set up ng bloated bureaucracy. Tapos, ito lang po yung makukuha ng ating mga regions. And by the way, take note po ah, wala pa po doon yung LGUs. Who will determine now kung paano o magkano ang makukuha ng mga local government units? Hindi po nakasaad. In theory, it's now dependent on the federated regions kung mag magkano ang ibibigay sa bawat LGU. Siyudad, barangay. So kung kaaway ni regional governor, uh, sorry ka, hindi kita re-release. That's how dangerous it could be. Okay, on the federated regions, it's actually limited decentralization. Local government units will be at the mercy of the federated regions. What decentralization? It's just another layer of government power being added, i.e. the regional government. At best, federalism provides decentralization at the regional level, but not, but not local decentralization powers now being enjoyed and given by our LGUs. Regional autonomy, yes, but what about local autonomy? What about LGU autonomy? Wala. Next. LGUs would have to depend on both the regional and central government. Dati, ngayon ho, sorry, hindi po dati ngayon, yung mga LGUs po natin, umaasa ng tulong sa national government. Ngayon ho, nakatali na siya sa federal, federated region, at sa federal government. Dalawa na. To my mind lang po, and just my opinion, this will even foster the culture of mendicancy among our LGUs. Mamamalimos. When hindi dapat. Because of the Mandana's ruling. Next, decentralization of administration. No express transfer of functions or the delegation of authority and responsibility directly to provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays. It will only happen at the level of the federated regions. Fiscal decentralization will only happen at the level of the federated regions. Where or what is the just share of, of LGUs from the national or regional? Hindi natin alam. Mukhang hindi na pag-isipan pa. Will LGUs have power to create own sources of revenues and levy taxes? What will be the allocation of LGUs? What allotment formula? 
to be followed. Policy or decision-making decentralization will only happen again at the level of the federated regions. Will LGUs have the power to make independent policies unique to their local situation? We don't know. Again, talipu sila sa federated region. Since fiscal decentralization is limited to the federated regions, how much LGUs will get or the share formula cannot be determined only for the federated regions. LGUs effectively excluded from the revenue collection and sharing, which are limited to the federal government and the federated regions. No guarantee of automatic release to LGUs. In theory, would require appropriation before LGUs would receive, if any. Again, you can vary depending on their federated regions. And dami question mark. Next, abangan. Katulad mo na nabanggit ni Sojun Furin kanina, which federal republic system? Because of the shift in power in the House of Representatives, nag-iba po yung landscape. The proposed federal draft constitution, the proposed uh, federal constitution is federal presidential. But it could very well be fede federal parliamentary pag nangyari po yung cha-cha. Ngayon po, tinignan ko po yung mga bansa na may mga federal constitution. Next. Again, CODCOM draft is the federal presidential system as executive powers vested in the president. In a federal parliamentary system, it vests government powers in the prime minister or chancellor in the case of Germany. Next. Sample federal parliamentary countries, Germany, Ireland, Italy, India. Tininan ko po yun lahat, uh, hindi po uh, babat, pero tininan ko po kung ano po yung pinakamalapit na pwede nating magaya. Ang nakita ko po ay Germany. Next. Sa Germany po, ah sorry, yung example po ng federal presidential ay ang USA, America. Okay, next. Okay. In the Germany, in Germany's parliamentary system, they call their parliamentary assembly as uh, Bundestag, which is in effect equivalent to our House of Representatives. They are district representatives directly elected by the people, and they are partyless political parties directly elected by the people. Sounds familiar? Now you can see the possibilities. Ito po ang pwede nilang gayahin. So, hindi lang po Prime Minister, pero baka tawagin po natin yung susunod na pinuno as Chancellor. That's very well possible. By the way, sino po mahilig sa Star Wars? Star Wars? Yung Evil Emperor po doon, Chancellor at tawag, ha? <laughs> okay, what are the key features of a federal parliamentary republic? President as the head of state. But, Alam po natin, in a federal parliamentary, ang totoong kapangyarihan na nagpapatakbo sa pamahalaan ay nasa Prime Minister or Chancellor. So the Chancellor or the Prime Minister as the head of government, the Chancellor or Prime Minister is a member of Parliament, the Chancellor or Prime Minister is elected by Parliament, and there's no term limit for the Chancellor or Prime Minister. Okay? Next. How and when. Possible play, na itanong po ni Atty. Susan kanina, ako I still believe, po, we, we have to be vigilant. We have to remain on guard. Malabo daw ho because of the legislative calendar. Pero ako kailangan bantayan pa rin eh. Kasi kung gusto po nilang ilusot, may lulusot eh. Kung gusto po talaga nilang gawa ng paraan, gagawa nila ng paraan yan. And yan po ay yung con as pa rin. A requirement lamang ay three-fourths of all its members. Now, because of the wording in the 1987 Constitution, it's silent whether it's voting jointly or separately. My guess po, my guess, itutulak po nila na voting jointly yan. Anyway, nasa kanila naman ng Supreme Court. So they could very well push for voting jointly. Panalangin nila po natin na kung sakaling humati yung panahon, ilaban po natin sa Korte Suprema, we pray that the Supreme Court will see it through, justly and fairly. 
1987 Constitution, plebiscite shall be held not earlier than 60 days nor later than 90 days after the approval of such amendment or revision. So, mahita po natin, kapag naitulak po natin yan, pwede pa po nilang ihabol eh, yung plebiscito bago magtapos yung taon, kung gusto po nila. May nagtanong po sa akin, paano yung pondo? Congress can easily augment the budget eh. They can easily allot budget by getting from the savings from the different department and pass a supplemental budget that will be used for this. So, next, take note. Again, very important. That's why ako po mismo natatakot na pwede pa rin pong ma-railroad sa Kongreso. There are no rules of procedure on CONAS. Tanungin po natin sa Senado, sa Kongreso, wala, po si wala, wala pa pong rules yan. So in theory, they need not follow rules on passing laws. In theory, it can be railroaded. W wala pong susundan eh. They can practically do anything that they want and call it rules. Next, that's it. Okay. Uh, nabitin po ba kayo? <laughs> oh, in closing po, maraming salamat po. I've been uh, taking note po of, ano, of what uh, si uh, Soljan Florin was uh, saying a while ago, discussing a while ago. Yung federalism po, uh, he, again, he said, 1987 Constitution is anti-dictatorship. Yung proposed federalism po, I'm sorry to say, with all due respect to Chief Justice Puno, the proposed federalism is actually anti-Filipino and it's anti-poor. I'm sure most of you, if not all, will agree with me. It's anti-Filipino, it's anti-poor. And kailangan bantayan po natin ang maigi ito. Ngayon po, last point. I'm sure you will probably wonder why we are discussing a July 17. And according to Sojen Florin nga po, this proposed federal constitution actually has no weight. Has no, has no bearing. Mahalaga pa rin po na alam natin kung anong nilalaman nito ngayon para alam po natin kung ano ang mga gagawin at babaguhin nila. Kaya, this is part of our vigilance. This is part of our pagbabantay na hindi mapasama ang ating bayan. Maraming salamat po. Okay, maraming maraming salamat.